This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Coffee Fitness Unicorn, your pocket DJ, and you're listening to Coffee Chats Podcast, a show where storytelling and coffee hang out. Today's special guest is Stephanie M. Matthews, author of The Gift and The Eve's End. In this episode, find out why scary things happen at Christmas and find the joy in Nutella. And lastly, find out if Stephanie makes me an honorary Canadian. Thank you for listening. Go forth and be magical. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Coffee Fitness Unicorn, your pocket DJ, and you're listening to Coffee Chats Podcast, a show where storytelling and coffee hang out. Today's special guest is Stephanie Matthews, author of The Gift and The Eve's End. Hello, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. So thank you for hanging out and uh, discussing your books today. This is very exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. So Stephanie, why don't you go ahead and talk about your books and let the listeners know who you are and what your books are about? Sure. Yeah. Well, um, my name is Stephanie Matthews, a pen name, Stephanie M. Matthews. I thought Tolkien and Martin had something going on with the middle initial, so I ran with it. Um, I am a uh, indie author from Ottawa, Canada. Um, I've kind of been a writer for just as long as I remember I can write stories um and I wrote these two stories um kind of as a I, I'm not really a big fan of Hallmark stories at Christmas time I always think they're a little bit too much they're not for me um so I kind of wrote these stories initially as kind of like the antithesis of the Hallmark Christmas story um and uh one idea just kind of led to a novel and then uh that was the gift it was um basically um the story to make all the Christmas magic that you want from Christmas because Christmas is my favorite holiday. Um, so all the Christmas magic, but none of that, that cheese and that flues that you just sometimes find hard to swallow. <laughs> um, so that's the gift. Um, it's basically the story of a um, young woman. She uh, goes to Belgium. She's studying architecture in Belgium. Uh, and her grandmother is uh, an immigrant from there. So her grandmother says, please go to my little my little village. I have a, a Christmas gift I want to give you. Uh, you can receive it there. And and uh, her grandmother sends a, a bit of a mysterious note to go with it. Um, the main character's name is Faye. And so Faye takes this mysterious letter, goes to this little Belgian village, really, you know, mystified what's going on. And, and when she gets there, um, you know, immediately she's met with antagonism from the locals and just some really strange things that are happening to her mentally and you know she's seeing weird things and and kind of one thing leads to another and, and next you know she's discovering that this village has something that's called the gift that comes out every Christmas Eve um, and it's not only something but someone and so uh, her experience is basically to literally survive Christmas Eve um, and then from that story, I, uh, I, I was going to leave it there. I thought I was happy with it, but I really wanted to uh, kind of conclude Faye's story. I felt a little bit bad about how I left her. So uh, I wrote The Eve's End, which is um, kind of wrapping up her story um, with her experiences with the gift um, in the village. And, um, and that, that's basically the story in a nutshell. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll do my best to not uh, uh, give away too much. Um, but one of the things I was concerned about, and we, we talked about this, and so I would love to chat about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize you had sent me book two. And I was afraid that I, I, I messaged you and I was like, oh my gosh, I only have book two. Is it going to be back? Can I go ahead and read just book two? Do I need to, do I have to read both of them? And I was really happy to realize that no, they are, you can read um, as a standalone 
Mm-hmm. Cause at first I started getting a little bit confused. That's what happened. I started reading and I was like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't really know what's going on, but you did a great job. Once I got farther enough in to pick up where book one mm-hmm. kind of left off. So, mm-hmm. so thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and just kind of reiterating, <laughs> thank you for even being concerned about that. <laughs> I was like, um, uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously that, that, that is a big thing, you know, like when you're trying to just follow the story and, and what the author wants to do with the story presented and everything. Um, but no, I, I definitely wrote the Eve's end, um, as a standalone, obviously you can get more out of the story reading the gift first, um, just naturally, but, uh, I definitely wanted to re or write the Eve's end as a standalone, not only because I knew that people as an indie author they're just going to kind of pick whatever book they see and I want to be able for them to experience my writing and the story equally no matter if they got it right or wrong so they didn't feel like they had to you know shell out more money to experience this indie author who they've never heard of before um uh, and I also just wanted it um to be um a book that stands on its own um, I, I, I really value those people who could write a full series and you just chuggle on from start to end. But, um, you know, as, as little book babies, I, uh, <laughs> I really wanted it to be kind of like a, as much of a, a younger child that is independent as an older child that's independent. For sure. And, and I, and I definitely appreciated that. So I, cause I'm all about making sure that I honor the author's mm-hmm. intent but it, it all worked out and I got to it meet did. the characters <laughs> and, and I would love to nerd out about your book. Yes, um, let's do that. I love that you explained why you chose Christmas, but you gave it a darkness. So literally the very first thing I have is on page four, mm-hmm. the scary stuff only happens on Christmas Eve. And yeah. I thought that was brilliant <laughs> because again, I didn't know what I was quite in for. Why is she picking scary stuff on Christmas? And then obviously you get into it and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. this is genius. I was like, <laughs> you know, because most of the time we don't associate Christmas with, mm-hmm. you know, the spooky, obviously with the exception of uh, Jack, the, the pumpkin king. You know, yeah, but- the night before Christmas. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's different. But as far as like book wise, so I thought that was that was brilliant that you made Christmas have a spooky feel to it. Mm hmm. We're going to talk about some Christmas treats that are candy that kind of does not and sort of relate to Halloween-ish. Okay. I'm here for it. (laughs) Awesome. So favorite Christmas treats. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Um, first off, I have a, um, a cookie that I, my mom made when I was younger and I still make it. Um, I have no idea if it's actually called this, but we always call them little Russian bonbons. And it's, it's just like a, a really easy cookie that you just kind of roll in, in uh, sugar. Um, and they're just, they're not too sweet, but they're just perfect. Um, yeah. So that's hands down one of my favorites. Um, and a good gingerbread. Like, let's be honest. Here. Come on. Classic European style, right? So it's Absolutely. thin, crispy, yeah. and spicy, right? Oh, yeah. Not enough spice in North America. <laughs> right? Belgian chocolate. Oh my God. Let's let's just stop there for a moment. You don't even need to go beyond that. Uh, (laughs) Best chocolate in the world. Yeah, honestly, that was a bit of a delight when I was, I I chose Belgium because you get the Belgian waffles, you get the Belgian chocolates, you get their amazing potatoes. You just say the fries. Yes. You (laughs) get beer, (laughs) right? Like it was just like an unexplored treasure trove. And like one of the things about Belgium is that you don't think about Belgium when you think of Europe. You want to go to France, you want to go to Italy, you want to go to Spain. Belgium gets locked out of so much, but there's such a so much culture and just so much depth to that country that I kind of forget about. It, it, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And honestly, I wanted to bring that to this book, like bring bring out the love for Belgium. I mean, it was in a bit of a negative way because it's bad things that happen there, but <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean... <laughs> so mail. Mayo. Mayo. Okay. Yeah. So I love when you introduce him and I literally have it here. Garlic scented wave. Interesting way to introduce him. And then you bring in the kebabs and the fries. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, please. Right. <laughs> I, I think I wrote that when I was a little hungry. I'll be honest. <laughs> Look, I love when characters eat in books. I, I actually, like, I think I wrote my characters were eating a lot. <laughs> they did. You have, there's the scene with uh, Kate uh, and um, Faye where they're mm-hmm. at the restaurant 
Yeah. All of the eating scenes and then coffee. There's a couple times where you have coffee and tea. And very important. Yeah. Of course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, literally I have at the very end in huge letters here, Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> you, Nutella. I mean, can you be in Europe without Nutella in there somewhere? No. That exactly. is, that is the, like, we literally discovered Nutella in Germany. Mm. And I literally, I was 18 and my world had changed Exploded. on that day yes I was like I I'm- love that you can eat Nutella for breakfast completely judgment free <laughs> I was in the little 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 containers like the way yep. that we have jam you know yeah I put this on my bread like what literally I was like okay these people know where it's at like oh, I-, I mean the, come on like that's why everyone wants to go to Europe it's not it's not for the fish it's not for the mountains it's for the Nutella at breakfast. Nutella it's for Nutella <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that being said, I do have here because I think at Christmas time, mm-hmm. um, I am I'm not familiar with this particular treat coming out other than Christmas time. But do you know those chocolate orange? They're they're like chocolate. Oh, they're oranges, yeah. and you smack it, and it like the pops. Terry's chocolate oranges. Yeah, they're the best. They're so much fun, <laughs> right? So I literally have that on here too. Like favorite Christmas treat, and then I was like the chocolate oranges. <laughs> That's actually a good shout. I, I kind of forgot about them, but like that was a highlight when I was a kid. You know, you get the chocolate orange for Christmas and you, you smash it. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the best part. <laughs> it was the stocking stuffer. It was usually always the stocking stuffer. Yeah, it was actually. Right? Oh, so speaking of um, names, mm-hmm. so Faye in French. So I didn't realize it was French because I just assumed that it would be Irish or Celtic yeah. um, because of fairy, but it is French. And it means confidence, trust, or belief. Yeah. And your character, Faye, is so much more than just a fairy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I tried to give my characters uh, some sort of meaning for most of their names. I felt like, you know, there's so much importance put on names that I could at least give my characters something that reflected that. And Faye was one of those names that I kind of wasn't sure what to call my my main character, but... I'd heard the name before. I really liked it. I liked the way it sounded. I liked the way it looked. And even though it does have that association with Faye Fairy, um, and a lot of people would jump to that, which was fine. Um, yeah, like you said, with the meaning, I just thought that was just a perfect way to kind of give her, especially since she struggles so much with just being strong in general. Like she's just just all the all the oppression and all, all the hardships that you know she has to go through to have a name that represents something, you know, a higher um, ability for her. I, I, I thought I owed her that as, as the authors, you know, the, the creator of her, of her torments. I could give right. her a good strong name. <laughs> Which I did appreciate. And like I said, I, I was really happy to realize that same thing. Mael, his name means prince or chief. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was nice to have these um different associations with them especially in the french because you there is the french influence you know where they are Mm -hmm. and then you kind of throw a little bit of french in there with you know some of the characters speaking it didn't make it made it foreign it gave it that foreign element that gothic element because one of the things that you love about gothic is there's always like there's a foreigner part of it is you're gonna have your ruins and you're gonna have your foreigner and you're gonna have an apparition like those are the standards yeah and so um you you hit us with you know those three and so um and then also I did look up and is it Nephis or Nephis how do you pronounce that yeah so it's actually more of a Nephis Nephis that's Latin yeah okay yes and that is forbidden act wrong or moral offense or wicked act yeah yeah yeah, it's kind of like the opposite because in Latin and in Roman culture they have fas, which is like your your holy day. It's a good day, anything, and then you have your nefas, which is basically the complete opposite. So that's your unlucky day. You don't do, you don't hold business or anything like that. So yeah, that was a very because it's such a strange name, right? Yeah, it's such a strange word, but that was very very specific because have- also you can't have a bad thing without Latin in there somewhere, right? Like- totally. <laughs> It's funny because usually I think of mall, right? We automatically go to the mall for mm-hmm. the negative. And mm-hmm. so I had to really work hard at my L because my brain kept seeing mall. 
Uh, like, no, he's good. Like, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. not the bad guy. He's not the bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually funny. I was like, okay, brain, work with me here. That being said, how you you gave Christmas a twist. And I really appreciate that because like you said, I, with Christmas, you associate Hallmark and all of the cheesiness and the rom-coms. Mm-hmm. And so it was really, I'm, I'm bummed that I didn't read it at Christmas time, but I am glad that I have this in my head right now yeah. because now I'm like, all right, we, the gift. Let's is, get ready for Christmas. Yeah. I'm like the gift is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just you know we'll just skip over christmas eve and jump right to christmas morning <laughs> right right yeah um so now i would like to nerd out with you on a more personal level mm-hmm. because it seemed like there was a lot of personal in um some of your personality was in your main character mm-hmm. and so you studied i actually studied ancient history ancient history okay mm-hmm. specifically roman ancient yeah. history okay yeah. so then that's going to bring us to the next next topic which is um sand and blood yeah the book that you translated mm-hmm. um about gladiators yeah <laughs> holy freaking cow like i i'm like blown away by that like i am absolutely fascinated so would you like to can, can you talk about that can you share I'd about that love to absolutely okay. yeah okay. so Translated, first of all, is a little bit of a a hefty word. The author I was working with actually did the initial translation into English. So I basically massaged the English into readable English. So I don't want to like make people think I'm better at Italian than I am. (laughs) Stop being so Um, modest. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it was actually uh, a really cool collaboration I was able to do. to, to go way back in my history, I actually had the opportunity to spend uh, two months in Rome uh, to study Italian, which is kind of where I got my start doing it. And on that trip, I, um, through the wonders of the internet, ended up meeting with a group of reenactors who reenact gladiator fights. <laughs> And yeah, it was just one thing kind of led to another. And next thing you know, I'm going to one of their shows and I meet like just, just met just great connection with these people. And the organizer of the group, um, he just was like, Hey, I have this book. I'm trying to get into English. You know, we've obviously got a great relationship that we've got going on. Do you want to help me with it? Um, I'm like, absolutely. (laughs) 100%. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I worked with him on this um, this project, uh, helped bring it into English. Um, it talks about uh, gladiators, everything from where did they come from, what's their history, how did they like, why were they a spectacle in the first place, to where we see them traditionally in the Roman Empire, you know, against thousands and thousands of people cheering. Um, it talks about what types of gladiators there were and the rules because it was a very structured thing. It wasn't like the movie gladiator where, you know, you just throw on whatever helmet and just slug fest. Um, there, there was rules like a sport and there were certain uh, types of gladiators. So in the same way that a sport today, like, like hockey would have your forward and your defense and your goalie while gladiators would have, you know, um, different, sets of pairs that they would match up so it was very specific um very structured and so the book discusses all of that um in a pretty overweight thing so yeah I loved it obviously <laughs> how cool is that did they talk about the diet does the book talk about the diet because I've heard oh, mixed things yeah. about the the gladiator diet yeah a little bit it does um the gladiator diet's really pretty interesting um they they weren't big on protein like we consider um athletes being big on protein um they just didn't understand that concept of you know protein for muscle building but they did understand that you know decent nutrition so they had a lot of legumes they had a lot of um chickpeas beans you know those kind of things to go with that would be their protein to go with a wheat like a bread um and they also had something that modern people kind of call it like the modern or the ancient power rate or the ancient Gatorade. Um, and basically what it was, was a mixture of, uh, like volcanic soot to get a lot of those minerals, uh, and then mix it with water, wine, um, one or two other things. And they've kind of, you know, shake it up and then chug it down. And, and, uh, yeah, it would just give them a lot of, 
of those minerals that you would consider like you need for for regenerating your your health after a workout or something so yeah <laughs> it's really interesting stuff that you would never consider that that's insane because i love gatorade so now i'm going to be looking out for volcano aid <laughs> <laughs> wait for it it's coming <laughs> 2023 that's insane that is so cool oh my god that's just that's i am fascinated so i love rome so on that same trip when i was 18 um and you know we grew up studying about europe but actually standing and you hear the stories right the gladiators and then now i'm standing i'm literally walking next to the Colosseum. so i'm 18 years old and my my 18 year old brain is just like being destroyed right now inside just <laughs> like oh my god i'm standing mm-hmm. And then something told me to like hug the columns, like literally touch the history, touch this. Obviously, I was never disrespectful. I was always making sure mm-hmm. if I was going to touch something, you know, that wasn't an ancient ruin that I wasn't, you know, touching something like, uh, you know, a bust of Caesar or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was very respectful. But when you're you're walking on the street, the Colosseum is right there. And you so I have looked, to touch it. I did. So I'll, I'll never forget. Like I just hugged that column and just tried to, I closed my eyes and tried to imagine the history and the things that mm-hmm. happened there. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and of course the food, the Italian food is just mind blowing. So we could probably have a four hour podcast on just the amazingness of the food. Okay. We'll do that next time. Okay. <laughs> uh, what kind of ties this in is, and I don't think I told you this, but I actually have, so I went to Rome um, in 2017, after I became a widow, I mm-hmm. kind of like lost my my sense of of things, and so um, I had to. My best friend was uh, he worked at the embassy in Rome, and he said, "Why don't you come out, hang out with me? Let me take care of you. Let me help you heal." And I was like, I remember at Rome when I was 18, and I was like, "Okay, I think I think it would be good because I remember the food, I remember mm-hmm. the the culture, and I remember the people." And so I was mm-hmm. like, "Okay, let's do this." And we went to the uh, Keats Shelley Museum, which I had no idea was even there, right next to the Spanish Steps. Oh, Um, mm -hmm. it's right there. And on the book, I saw this. It's the anchor with the um, the dolphin kind of. uh, Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show. I'm gonna see if I can show you here on my my arm. So bear with me. I hope I don't knock over the mic. Okay. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. So that's Festina Lente which is make haste slowly. And it's so crazy because that was actually, I think it was Marcus Aurelius. He taught that to Augustus, his soldiers. Augustus, actually. Augustus, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And again, I was just like, oh my God, because I write SOPs, standard okay. operating procedures. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that the, and so in the military is where I learned about SOPs. And so literally like all of these things are just like falling into place. And I was like, Rome is good. Rome is really good. <laughs> Rome is so good. Rome is great. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's a little unfortunate you didn't get to actually read the gift because there's a whole scene that happens in Rome and St. Peter's. Uh, and I specifically put it in there because of my love for Rome and everything that it is. And you're right. You, you just, you go to that city, uh, especially, and it's just, you're almost speechless the whole time and just overwhelmed, but in like in the most incredible mind blowing way. Absolutely. And and since we're on the conversation of uh, places, Mm -hmm. what I'd like to do is talk about Nova Scotia. So Nova Scotia, Mm -hmm. I am absolutely fascinated with Nova Scotia. Are you? Yes. (laughs) All the knowledge that you have about Nova Scotia. Okay, so this is another podcast that we're going to do, right? Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. Oh, God. Part segment. Yeah. (laughs) Part one. Um. Yeah, no, Nova Scotia is obviously, it's just as gorgeous as you imagine it to be. Um, my dad was in the Navy, so he was working out of the port of Halifax with the Navy. And um, we lived just about 40 or 45 minutes south of that in a place called Truro, actually north of that, sorry, in a place called Truro. Um, and it's right at the corner of the Bay of Funday where the tides come in. They're the highest tides in the world. And uh it was always entertaining because every couple of years we get surfers who came up looking for these amazing waves, but the, the tides just go up. They don't come in like massive wow. waves. So you had these surfers who were looking, you know, catch these amazing things. We're just like, you. I'm sorry, you came a long way for nothing. 
but no, it's, it's just gorgeous. It's wonderful. It's, you know, um, driving along the South shore is probably one of the best, you know, driving roads you can be on. Cause you're, you have the ocean like right there and there's, there's no guardrails or anything, but there's all these little fishing huts that people mm-hmm. converted either to like art museums or they still use it as fishing and you're just right there as gorgeous like single track road going it's uh yeah it's awesome it's awesome so nova scotia Mm -hmm. means new scotland right it does and it's because when they came over they and then my understanding is the terrain is also very very similar to um their terrain Have you noticed how Coffee Fueled Stories doesn't have any ads? That's because I work tirelessly to keep this show alive. After three years on my own, I've decided I need to ask for your help. I've never asked anyone to subscribe. I've never asked anyone to leave a review. I've never asked anyone to rate the show. And I've never asked anyone to pay to listen. There are a few ways you can help support the show. I've created a Patreon page, Coffee Fueled Stories, and a subscription section on my podcast website. It's simple to support and help me keep my dream alive. Just click the link in the show notes to set up your paid subscription option. It's that easy. Thank you for your support. In a lot of ways, in a lot of places, yeah. Um, but yeah, huge Scottish population there. Like we have our own Highland Games. Like it's, yeah. No way. it's Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. I mean, that is to- so cool. <laughs> okay. So then that being said, so love of cookies, yeah. Yeah. hockey, and ancient mm-hmm. Rome. So we've talked about mm-hmm. ancient Rome. Yeah. We've talked about cookies. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about hockey because oh, yeah. I should be Canadian. I should be an honorary Canadian because that's my favorite game. Like I go insane for hot, like the Stanley cup is like the coolest thing ever. I don't do sports at all, but the Stanley damn cup it, is so special hockey is where it's at. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes oh my god so play hockey and if you do what mm-hmm. position yeah so I I do and kind of uh, self-appreciatingly in my bio I say I pretend like I can play hockey and I think that's because you never really can be good at playing hockey <laughs> um I started actually playing um late so maybe only seven and seven years ago I started playing uh and the thing about learning how to play hockey is that you know any other sport you can just start basketball you just start learning how to dribble and shoot but like hockey you have to learn how to do everything but on blades yeah <laughs> on like razor thin blades razor thin, razor thin. So, so going forward turning stopping going backwards it's an entire new set of of movements and then you have to do it with a stick and a puck which is like this big so right? it's it's so hard but I love it yes it's so much so fun to play I play forward um I play wing um, because you don't have to skate as much as a center <laughs> just a little bit lazy that way um <laughs> But no, it, it's just so much fun. I play in uh, a women's league, um, not the lowest, but somewhere in the middle to low. Um, it's, and it's just a great group of people that we hang out with. We have fun, we have beers. Um, I do some pickup with some, you know, mixed gender, a little bit more advanced, but everyone's always really nice. And they make sure they pass to me every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah. Like, you just help a girl out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, you get a good group and, you know, guys have generally, if they're playing, they, they've started playing along, like since they were kids. So they're yeah. just on it but you know they're it's all about fun it's all about learning so if you're a woman if you're a girl you go out there to play they're just like yeah so they'll pass to you they'll help you get goals they'll you know not be too hard on you so yeah it's a great culture so as much as you love watching it playing it come on right I was gonna say I'm like it's it's got to be completely different you know because we see it from up above but to be Mm -hmm. down on the ice you know at ice level like that's that's got to be like whole new level so so I, I that's like so cool um, and I always said, if I was, I don't have children, but if I was to have children, I'd want to be a hockey mom. Yes. Like, and I would have a suburban because they, you got a lot of gear. And oh, so I would have the gear. big, big suburban yeah. and I would have the bumper sticker that says, give blood, play hockey. <laughs> yeah. I approve of all of these things. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> get hockey however you can. Okay. <laughs> I have, that's what I'm saying I'm like I am like seriously I should be an honorary Canadian because I love hockey 
Like, I totally agree with that. So I, I'm fully support of this. I will extend an honorary Canadian citizenship to you. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So uh, let's get back to your book now that we've segued. Uh, well, lay on the hockey, <laughs> uh, which I really appreciate. So thank you. The Easter egg. Can we talk about that? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm going to admit that I actually didn't catch on to that until chapter 15. But because you did catch on to it. I did. So what happened was I was flipping through the pages. And again, because you kind of really don't pay attention to the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Like you just, you're kind of, oh, next chapter. Okay. Something kind of like, because of the position where you had the little letter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm. So I circled it. I wrote it down. And I was like, hmm. So there I was, marked my page. And went all the way back, starting at chapter one. And then that was the photo that I sent you. Because yeah. I didn't know. I was like, okay, is this a cipher? That's what, So I was like, okay, one with this letter. And then I was, mm-hmm. and then I got to a point and I was like, okay, it's not a cipher. Thank God. <laughs> thank goodness it's not a cipher. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I didn't want to make it too hard. <laughs> right? So my question to you about this Easter egg is if you have the word, the code words, can you like access like a website? Is it kind of like, what is this Easter egg about? Yeah. So the, I, I wish it was that cool. I, I just, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't have the resources to make secret websites and, you know, toll free numbers that you can call. Hint, with hint, hint yeah. listeners, hint, hint, hint listeners. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah anybody so in to, kind of, <laughs> to back it up a little bit the um the 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 number chap, chapter numbers uh of actually both books um they have letters kind of hidden in the chapter numbers and you put the letters together and you get basically a secret code and it's basically just that if you succeeded in finding it that is the easter egg again i wish it was cooler <laughs> <laughs> you know locations to a geocache or something um, <laughs> um but honestly I just uh, you know when you asked me about it I, again I was just absolutely thrilled because a lot of people just don't look at chapter numbers but like I'm I love it when people can find little things like that um on, on dvds you know you, you press left left three times and you get you know whatever um and I, I honestly just love that so much. It's like, I have to do that with my book. <laughs> and my, uh, my, my friend who was my graphic artist, we were just kind of like spitting ball, spitballing ideas. And we're like, let's, let's do like a code in the chapter numbers. And we did it. Um, that is and, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it won't give away what the code is. No, nope, nope. They have to do it themselves. <laughs> right. So, but can I ask you um, what it was for the gift? And if you want, I can edit this part out because obviously I, I didn't have book one so I don't sure. know what what that code was yeah and actually it's a little bit easy you don't have to remember editing it out because I don't remember the exact words uh <laughs> it was it was basically a song lyric um a Christmas carol song lyric um that did it and um I I got more creative with it on the eve's end um which is why it's a bit more of a, a thought out sentence I guess you could say um so with the the gift it's just a song lyric from a Christmas song uh carol Christmas carols kind of played a little bit more of a a role in the gift than it did in the eve's end so I just kind of wanted that cool little tie-in of congratulations you found the code (laughs) so that being said do you have a favorite favorite Christmas carol I have a couple actually um one of them is um uh a holy night I, I love just how it crescendos into this amazing, like, epic of a song. It's just, like, screaming, like, ah. Um, I, I really like that. I also really like the story about it, you know, the origin of, of like, a, this German guy who wrote this carol way back in the day. And um, I love the Carol of the Bells. It's a great little song. And um, one I had rediscovered when I was going through the Eve's End, and I would listened to it as a kid, uh, it's called The Huron's Tale. And it's uh, more of a Canadian song. Um, it came from um, some missionaries way, I think they might've been French missionaries and they were um, just working with the Huron people and they kind of created this Christmas song to kind of introduce them to Christian uh, Christmas as well as integrating some of their own religious beliefs of you know, the great spirit and stuff. Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful sound. Um, really kind of a haunting beautiful um, thing and uh, Sarah McLaughlin does a wonderful rendition of it and 
I just totally forgot about it when I, until I was reading this book and then I read it. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, so um, I, I know that we're, we're kind of segueing off of your book here, but I'm really having a great conversation with you. So I'm just going to run with it until our time runs out. Absolutely. So, sure. The Pantheon. Yes. The Pantheon right next to it is an amazing restaurant. And uh, we sat and had al fresco. All, the whole time we were there, mm-hmm. the whole time, mm-hmm. best yeah. pasta right next to the Pantheon, like literally sitting there eating yeah. and looking at the freaking Pantheon, which is just an incredible, incredible piece any of architecture. Better? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Come on. <laughs> like, like just, just bottle up everything you want and just right there. Like, I just couldn't, I literally had to keep pinching myself because I'm in these places and I'm just like, crap. Oh my God. I'm here. Yeah. I'm doing this. I'm seeing yeah. this. I'm eating this. Yes. I will eat whatever you guys order. I was like, I don't, I don't even care. It's, 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 it's Italy. You can't go there's, wrong. There's no, wrong. there's no bad food. <laughs> and so they did, they just ordered like a whole bunch of food and like plates just came and we just oh, were yeah. like. I was just like, oh my God. I'm like, this is what it feels like to be in a, a Roman. Like you just, you just, <laughs> just everything. See, double fisting it with pasta, like everything. Totally, totally. <laughs> so yeah, so you gotta love Rome, right? Oh, you do. You, you do. totally gotta love Rome. <laughs> so Stephanie, I wanna say thank you so much for your time and and sharing these awesome stories and having reveries with me. Um, and so I'm, I'm not going to take up much more of your time now. Uh, but, uh, if you would please, I do have a, my little tagline of go forth and be magical. Mm -hmm. And so I would love if you would send us off with, uh, how, and you can say however you want. I I completely leave it up to you. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up this, this awesome, awesome segment. Okay. Well, first again, thanks so much for having me on here. It's been so much fun sharing these memories and being able to talk about, you know, obviously what I'm so passionate about on all escapes. Um, otherwise, I just want to say like, go and have an adventure, wherever it may be, wherever it may look like, wherever it is, just be adventurous and throw your hands to the wind and have some fun. Because if you're not having fun, you're not living life. Thank you again, Stephanie. It's been a true pleasure. And thank you, Unicornos. I appreciate you hanging out with us. Go forth and be magical.